Perfect. What's up, y'all? <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to the channel once more uh, to the podcast Eric's Talk. And for the summer season, we have my friend Hunter here, and we're going to do a little mini series uh, called "What It Means to Be a Blank." And we're going to start it off with Hunter, and um, he is in the military, and he does a whole bunch of stuff down across the ocean and within our country. So I figured it'd be a good person to talk to for what it means to be a United States citizen. So uh, Hunter, you want to introduce yourself? Uh, Eric pretty much covered it. You know, I'm a, I'm a blank. Yeah. I, I fit <laughs> in with his little category right there. I'm from the same town as Eric. We went to high school together. Uh, yep. He goes to the college my ex-girlfriend used to go to. So yes, you know, whatever. <laughs> we I were always... Boy Scouts back in the day. Yeah, I always forget about that. And then we became like friends with her friend. It, it was a small world. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Um, so yeah, I guess we can just dive right into it. Maybe since you, um, I, I don't even know how long you've been in the military. Maybe you can give some of your background on that uh, to like get us started. Uh, let's see. We graduated 2014. Yeah, we did. <laughs> Uh, I joined the military in 2013, uh, went to basic, like a month after thing, July 2014, went to basic in Fort Jackson, South Carolina, moved on to EOD school, which is uh, explosive ordnance disposal, EOD school at Fort Lee, Virginia, was there for about about a month before I failed out of EOD school, uh, Mod B Prac, which is fucking ridiculous, but, you know, whatever, that school's hard as shit. It sounds um, like it. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was, it was difficult. I'd show you my notebook, but I'm not allowed. <laughs> yeah, um, probably good. Yeah, more notes than I ever took in high school. Oh. Um, after that, I reclassed to... The MOS of 13 Mike, which is a multiple launch rocket system crew member, uh, moved to Fort Sill, Oklahoma to complete training for that, which took about six weeks or something like that. It's not a hard job, real quick and easy to learn. Uh, stationed here after that, which kind of sucked because I was like, you know, Fort Sill sucks. Well, Fort Sill doesn't suck, but a lot in Oklahoma out there, that place is garbage. Yeah. Like, like it's like the crime level of Erie, but, like, more run down and just otherwise disgusting oh, than nice. Erie. So I didn't, I didn't really want to be here, but I ended up being stuck here. And, you know, job's a job. Go True. where you're told. Uh, got to my unit and found out we were deploying in a few months. So I, got, I got to my unit in January of 2015. <laughs> Found out we were deploying in June, so, you know, train up for that and shit. Deployed to... I don't and know. it was like 110 degrees at 4 o'clock in the morning. Found out we were deploying in June 2015. Got there beginning of the month. Um, you know, landed in Kuwait. 110 degrees, 4 o'clock in the morning. I was like, ah, shit, I fucked up. <laughs> uh, that was my first thought stepping off the plane i was like i fucked up yeah oh my gosh i went out for a run today and it was like 80 degrees and i was like oh my god i'm dying <laughs> and like yeah, full dude, gear 110 wow 110 was fucking it 110 ended up being like a decently cool temperature after a while i mean oh my god like First week, the first week we were there, we went to the field for uh, training, you know, make sure everything worked properly and all that stuff, and uh, ended up being about 135 degrees that week. Oh my gosh, that's insane. Uh, yeah, went black on water, went black on food, went black on everything, like the first day. Oof. Breaking vehicles, it was, it, it was, it was, I mean, it was kind of fun, you know, like, there's big sand berms out there. We were jumping with the vehicles and stuff because yeah, <laughs> stuck, so you had to hit them pretty hard. 
uh, broke a lot of vehicles trying to fix them out there in the heat of the day. It was, it's kind of sucky. I mean, there's, there's still one vehicle we got that uh, my my driver and I, we broke. That thing's brake lines are still held together with zip ties. <laughs> nice. That's amazing. But, That's uh, amazing. yeah, stayed in Kuwait, absolutely hated it. And then uh, two months after we got there, something like that, we went up to Iraq, did our thing up there, you know, fucking won some medals, did some cool stuff. Not really stuff to get into right now. Yeah. That's, that's, that's kind of OPSEC stuff, but came back to Kuwait for a couple more months, came home, uh, back in Oklahoma now. Still haven't been home yet, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, yeah. I'm just hoping for another deployment because this whole being stateside thing, not working out. Yeah. So what do you do in Oklahoma? Uh, Job-wise? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yep. Uh, there's uh, motor pools. I sweep those. Uh, trucks that don't ever move. I make sure those don't those aren't broken every single week, even though they don't <laughs> move anywhere. Which somehow they still manage to break. Yeah. Naturally. Um, I, I do some online classes. Uh, PT. You know, it's like a combat arms job. When you're stateside, you really don't do your job that much. Especially in the 13 mic high Mars MLRS world, we it's it's so expensive to shoot us that we don't get to shoot that often, like stateside. Yeah. So, I mean, it's it's pretty boring being back here because I don't do my actual job. True. So, what what would you rather take the 110 degree uh, thrills uh, on occasion or or being stateside in your current position? I wouldn't go back to Kuwait, but I yeah. would go back to Iraq. Right now, yeah. If if you if somebody told me I could leave right now, I'd grab my hat and be out the fucking door. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's just there's more, there's more money over there. You're not spending money. True, true. Doing your job. I mean, it, it it was just a good time. Yeah, no time to spend money, but time to make it. Nice. <laughs> no way to spend money, dude. The internet access there yeah, is like true. zero. It was, it, was, it was a good time. Yeah, sounds I mean, there, like there's, there's some bad times, you know. My buddy, his wife was cheating on him while we were over there, and we'd oh, sit dang. up on the roof. Every, we'd sit up on the roof every night and talk about stuff. But good thing he had a squad with him. That's yeah, that's harsh, man. Um, so that's a pretty um fleshed out history for only a couple of years. So that's pretty exciting. And uh, and you looking to be going back in the future? In the future. Yeah, yeah, hopefully I will be uh, here pretty soon again. Uh, I'm not going to get into details on that at all. Yeah. But hopefully soon. Yeah, you're probably not allowed, yeah. No. Um, exactly. But yeah, hopefully soon I can be out of Garrison because I hate, I hate Garrison. Like, yeah, it's nice having my own room and stuff like this, but no, it's just, it's not, it's not fun. Yeah. Yeah, so... Like, I'm not What's that? I'm not actively doing anything. Yeah, I, I can imagine that must be a little boring. Mm -hmm. So, what was like the main or a couple main reasons why you wanted to uh, join the military? Are you in the army? Yeah, the yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I active thought. Active duty. Yep. Um, biggest reason, honestly, which I mean, I'm sure you can kind of relate to this too. I mean, your dad's a cop, my dad's a firefighter. Yeah. You know, growing up with big, you know, manly, badass dads, you know, <laughs> one of the big things, you know, being the, the son, you know, you want to, you want to make your dad proud of you. And that was honestly one of the biggest things. Yeah. Um, I mean, other than that, you know, I always knew I was going to end up in the military mm -hmm. just because I don't, I don't like colleges. I, I absolutely hate colleges. I mean, no offense to you or any of your viewers, but no, I hate I colleges. pretty much agree with you. I totally feel you. <laughs> I hate college kids. I hate the college lifestyle. I just, I, it wasn't for me. So yeah, you know, I figured be Uncle Sam's bitch for a couple of years and yeah. then get out and figure out what the hell I want to do with my life. Yeah, that's a good idea. And there's definitely that duty to country thing there too. So you feel like you're, you know, accomplishing something for the greater good, right? 
Yeah. Oh, I Even mean, if you are Uncle Sam's bitch. <laughs> I mean, in today's society, though, I mean, there's a lot of people that don't appreciate that or don't uh, yeah. really feel that we're doing the right thing. I do. I personally feel that we're doing the right thing, but I also feel like we're not doing enough. I mean, yeah. the way things are, you know, I can't get really get into it a whole lot because, you know, technically I'm a representative of the Army and stuff, and I mean, Absolutely. none of my views here reflect the views of the United States Army at all, but, yeah, um, you know, nowadays we're, we're severely limited on what we can do. I mean, our force sizes are getting cut, our funding is getting cut. I mean, it's, it's like they're sending us out to do our job with both our hands tied behind our backs. Yeah, exactly. I, I've heard you say that before, for sure. <laughs> well, yeah, I think, like, um, what is sort of really sad in today's, I don't know, world or generation or whatever, is that um, regardless of your political beliefs, um, I still think it's important to respect, like, the military as it is, you know. Because um, I, I feel like respecting active duty... Um, military people and veterans um, is sort of like a completely non-political thing, you know? Well, I mean, yeah, there's the, that's like kind of the the warm, fuzzy, tender feeling side of it, but then on the other side, True. you know, I've never done anything to earn your respect, I don't think. I mean, what, we were like 10 and I tried to punch you in the face once. <laughs> <laughs> and, then I, and then I punched you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Well, our our friendship did not really get off to a good start. <laughs> no, no, no. But I mean, there, oh my god, so long ago. Respect, yeah, there's that general respect for uh, for you know the the group as a whole. But I mean, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say it's respect that's needed to be given. It's just the support. I mean, like yeah. World War Two, that was that was. A countrywide effort. Absolutely. And this, this, the current conflicts we're involved in have been going on far longer than World War II did, mm -hmm. and the country just isn't galvanized behind the military anymore. Yeah. The country. Is, I mean, I think we were talking about it the other day. The country is just. Yeah, you wrote an article about it the other day. The country is just like polarized. Yeah. People can't come together on a common ground for anything. No, it, it really not much at all. And. At the end of the day, I mean, if you're on the left side or the right side, and I mean, I'm as far right as right can go, personally. But whether you're on the right side or the left side, if you live in America and you're an American citizen, you are an American citizen first and foremost before you're anything else. Yes. And people don't even get behind that anymore. People don't even support the country as it is anymore like there's there's people who live in america reap all the benefits of living in america but do nothing but speak out against america yeah which um it, it is sort of like a, a paradox right you know america allows you to do nothing but speak out against it but uh i do feel like you know if you're just criticizing it then you know why do you live here <laughs> yeah and i mean you know i'm i'm all about you know come here legally, this, that, and the other thing, but, I mean, even if you come here legally, if you're coming here to obtain a better life, you shouldn't speak out against our way of life because yeah. you came to join that way of life. Or or replace the people who were born here who speak out that way, because <laughs> there are both of them, for sure. Yeah. Because our country sure has its problems, but it's uh, imperfect just like any other nation I would... I would say some oh, are yeah. better than others. <laughs> I think it's, we're one of the better ones still. It's far from perfect, but I truly believe like deep down in my heart of hearts that we are the greatest country on earth. And I mean, do I love our government? No. Do I think our government's flawed? Yes. But at the same time, I didn't, I didn't join the military to necessarily fight for our government, I joined the military because I love America, the mm. country. Well, not not, not California, but <laughs> there'll be an earthquake. Uh, America, 
<laughs> yeah. I mean, like, as, as a country, as a whole, I believe it is the most beautiful place on Earth. I mean... Yeah. It's like you're fighting for the people, not the people who run it, right? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't even say the people. I mean, I'm I'm a sure. pretty cynical person. I don't I don't like too many people, but <laughs> I can feel you. The, the land itself is is just absolutely gorgeous. I True. mean, where we come from, dude. I mean, here in Oklahoma, this place is flat. You can you can see for miles. I hate that. Yeah, me too. We come from the hill country. We're 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 mountain men, fucking. Yes, I. I mean, prefer the hills for sure. The hills, the forest. There's no forest here. Yeah. Oh, that'd be what weird. They do call, what they do call forest is like a stand of trees that all look all you know stunted and gnarled and. Yeah. That all know, look my the same. Home, my home, Warren County, Pennsylvania, with the rolling hills, the Allegheny River. The Allegheny National Rainforest, dude. Well, not rainforest, but, yeah. you know. It does I'm rain. Too, I'm, I'm too used to calling it the Allegheny National Rainforest. But, well, yeah, it's beautiful. I mean, it's, it's just too perfect for me to sit idly by when there's people there who, you know, people on the other side of the world who just don't think that we should be here, like, on yeah. the Earth, period. And It's pretty know, messed people, up. People who would love to harm people from where I come from where people where I come from wouldn't be able to enjoy my home anymore as much as I enjoy my home. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, um, you really have, like, sort of a special, I don't know, like, connection with just the land itself is basically what you're, what you're saying. Because, um, like, I don't think, um, like, that would ever really go away. It's sort of like that national pride that's just sort of inherent if you live here. And if you don't get it, then you don't get it. But I think both of us get it. Mm-hmm. I love, I love my country. I love my I love my home. I love my God. I love my freedoms. I mean, goddamn, patriotic is shit, bro. I like it. <laughs> and I mean, there's people in the world who don't think that we should have the freedoms that we do. Who don't think that we should live the way we live, and who want to take that way of life away from us. Not just from me. Not just from you. From everybody who enjoys our way of life. Yeah. They think that their way of life is better than ours, so they need to come and make us change to suit their way of life. Yeah. <clears throat> See, like, the thing is, we're like a national citizen first, but we're all citizens of the world, too. So I feel like, oh, if you think your way of life is better than ours, then good for you, but don't try to force change upon the rest of the world. That's where things get bad, right? I mean, I've never, I've never gotten into that whole citizen of the world thing to me i'm i'm an american yeah but you can I be mean, both like you said you citizen of the country first but i see like to me what divides um countries like our governments but like nature connects everything but uh now i just sound like a hippie so <laughs> yeah you do you do kind of sound like a hippie and i mean that's just in my opinion you know i am a goddamn citizen of these united states of america i am from the woods of pennsylvania the oil fields of pennsylvania i play a banjo i wear cowboy boots i got a belt buckle on that says redneck i got a big ass 1995 dodge ram 2500 with a 59 cummins in it pours black smoke out because freedom and freedom you know what I wouldn't change a thing about that. I wouldn't want to claim citizenship to anything else other than the United States of America. Yeah. I wouldn't claim citizenship to the world. I would claim the United States of America because that's my home. Yeah, I live in the world, but the world's not my home. America is my home. Pennsylvania is my home. Damn straight. And I, I won't associate myself with anything else other than America. Yeah. Well, I like and it. The whole citizen of the world stuff, I mean, that's just, no, there's, the limited, parts of, the limited parts of the world I've seen, albeit they're shitty. Yeah, they're, they're, <laughs> very true. They're not the place of the world. But my view of the world right now is, we have it good, dude. I mean, we have, oh, totally. it, we have it absolutely made. 
We're not out in the desert herding camels living in freaking tents. Oh, I know. We're not having our kids getting blown up in the streets. Well, I mean, the Boston bombing, but, you know, that was refugees. Yeah. Fucking sort of a contained incident. Like um, but, yeah, I mean, like, if, if you don't, like, I don't know, if you don't, like, go out to, like, camp or, like, live in the wilderness, like, you will often, almost always forget how good you have it and what freedoms you have. Absolutely. I mean, what well, Germany, though, they do let you smoke in the airports, which <laughs> I thought was bad. I don't really smoke too much. Yeah. But as soon as I saw somebody with a cigarette in the airport, I was like, I gotta, I gotta try it. I gotta try it. I gotta try it. That's so but, funny. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And um, I sort of feel like, yeah, I, I mean, I think I'm, Maybe I'm not as cynical as you, but I don't really like a whole lot of people overly much. But um, I don't know, as my profession as a journalist, um, I've sort of um, went into that profession, firstly, because I like to write, but secondly, because I feel like it's my duty to watchdog um, the government and like bigger organizations for the greater good of people. Because when I separate it and just say people and not specific human beings, then it's a little better to do, like, that citizen-esque duty to me. And, I mean, that's that's not the duty solely of journalists either. That's Exactly. That's actually a, a duty of the citizens of the United States of America. I agree. I mean, I think it was George Washington who said that uh, when a government uh, becomes tyrannical, it's the citizen's duty to replace that government. Absolutely, yeah. So it's the, it's the duty of every American citizen to to pay attention to what's going on and stand up for the rights. And by stand up for yeah. the rights, I don't mean, oh, you know, burn down Ferguson because some guy tried to kill a cop and got shot in the fucking face. Yeah, yeah. I mean, without getting too much into that particular topic, I mean, I feel like there are negative and positive ways to handle anything. And if you're not going to participate in a positive way to, like, you know, I don't know, just do something impactful, then I don't really see the point. I feel like it's sort of going back on itself. But um, it, it's sort of funny because I feel like in today's society, we're, like, with the Internet and everything, we're, some, we're somehow, like, both more, um, like, knowledgeable about the world and less at the same time. And I feel like different types of people pay different amounts of attention to different things, and it's just really weird what we have going on, I think. Well, see, I think that there's people who think with their head, and I think that there's people that think with their feelings. And I like to consider myself one of those people that think with my head rather than my feelings. And I mean, you can't really knock both, or you, you can't really knock either one. I mean, yeah, people with their feelings are like, oh, that's wrong, that shouldn't happen. But people who think with their heads are like, okay, yeah, that's kind of messed up, but it needs to happen, or it should have happened, or it was right that it happened in the end. Yeah. Yeah. And and people, people who think with their heads end up seeming a lot more cynical or hard-hearted, but at the end of the day, I feel like we types of people who think like that are more practical. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> People who were upset over that gorilla that got shot, who cares? I mean, good lord, it was a freaking gorilla. You know how many people died in Chicago that day? Yeah, I had heard. Like, I had heard about God. that too. Well, it's see, like that's the thing. People just need something new to get outraged about, and it's got to be different. So, unfortunately, I think that's why other things don't get as much attention. But um, also, that's yeah. I don't know, like. Ah, oh, man. Because, like, again, I don't really like some people, <laughs> but I don't know. I feel like it's also our duty to protect, like, I don't know, make sure stuff like that doesn't happen. But, yes, it's not as important as, the, like, the deaths of, like, actual people. But I don't know if people understand that or, or, or what not. Ah, oh, man. I, I like your... 
comparison, well, your ex explanation of the whole head and heart thing, because, like, y you said you're, like, as far right as possible, so I might as well throw out my political beliefs as a blanket statement. It's like, I feel like I'm conservatively economical and socially liberal, which I guess would combine the, the head heart thing. So mm -hmm. that's why I feel like I'm in the middle somewhat. But I don't feel like anybody's, like, in that sort of, like, middle or on the right or left and, like, willing to, like work together anymore. That's why we have such an unproductive government nowadays, and it's really sad. It's that, and then, I mean, all this stupid stuff that people get outraged over. Oh, there's I, some stupid I, stuff. <laughs> I think that it's just media-directed distraction to the masses, to the consumer-driven masses. Oh, yeah, totally is. To well, people who don't think... Yeah, absolutely, and I've, like, thought about it a lot myself, being a small part of the media, and it's, like, stuff that is simple um, gets traction. That's that's what makes money, you know? People who are upset about a cup at a coffee shop, that's a lot more um, palatable to maybe not so smart individuals than, like, the economic crisis or um, problems with the military or something like that. Which is unfortunate, but I think that might be the case, and that's why this sort of thing is, like, blown out of proportion. Well, I'm not saying that we're more important, like, we as in the military are more important than anything else, but we are involved in a lot of global events that are important. Well, yeah, I'm, well, I mean, like, uh, yeah, I'm not saying you guys are the only important thing, too, but, like, I mean, if I didn't know you or, like, a couple other people... Like, I don't even think I would know about how under-supported, you know, the Army is, for instance. And y you would think that that would at least be a news story at least one night out of the week or something, right? I mean, like, I just feel like it's all just so sensational and superficial. Oh, yeah, and I think uh, this fiscal year, I think it's 40,000 more troops that the uh, regular Army's cutting. Yeah, and, like, you don't hear about that sort of thing. You hear about whatever um, Kim Kardashian did uh, on, on the toilet last or something like that instead. Or somebody shot a lion in Africa. Big whoop. Yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> I don't know. It, it's really weird, and I, I don't know if it will ever really change, because it would have to be the nature of people as a whole that would have to change, so it'll be interesting to see what happens in the future. I think that this... This election, I think it's going to be a big thing. I think it's going to be a, a change in the in the general tone of our country. Yeah, I think it already is, regardless of what side you're on. It's pretty crazy. Just the... I'm, I'm limited on what I can say here. Yeah. Because, you know, Commander-in-Chief can't really say anything against him, but I think that the, just the sheer amount of candidates that have run this year has just gone to show how many people think that we need change and we need something better. Yeah, very true. Yeah, well, and, like, the the candidates who are left, I mean, they're basically on completely polar opposite sides, too. So it's like the, the majority of the American population is sort of left to pick which poison they would rather kill themselves with. Um, regard like regardless of what you or I think, like it's just it's really divided. Yeah, and they they are pretty much polar opposites. I mean, I'm not I'm not even gonna acknowledge Hillary Clinton as a candidate anymore. I mean, that woman that woman belongs in jail. Dude, same. <laughs> in jail and nowhere else. But. Oh. As far as the other two remaining candidates, they are fairly polar opposites. They're also very much alike, too. That's I how do you, find interesting. How do you do that? Oh, I mean, they're both completely anti-establishment. Like, and they're both very um, hot-headed. They're both very tempered. They both sort of they speak with their um, with their hearts on the line. I think so. It's really interesting that. Like, they've definitely grown their um, audiences in different ways, obviously. But, uh, yeah, I think they're actually more similar than people would give them credit for.
I mean, I guess they're both... Not in every way. I guess, I guess they're both in, uh, in different ways, playing off the mentalities of Americans these days. I mean, mm-hmm. Bernie is kind of catering to, you know, the entitled generation, and Trump is, Trump is feeding into the whole, you know, keep America American kind of mentality, which is yeah. a big part of America nowadays. Yeah, yeah, I know. And a yeah. lot, a lot of uh, registered Democrats this year have switched over to Republican to vote for Trump, and a lot of people who weren't going to vote at all have joined in the election to vote for one or the other. Yeah, it's it's going to be an interesting rest of the year. Like, I, I nobody really predicted, you know this type of movement on either side and i think it's going to be interesting just how our country evolves in the next few years i'm interested to find out yeah i mean do i think the election is going to go the way that i want it to go yes but at the same time am i worried about a socialist coming into office most certainly most certainly am i worried about that happening not not even Two generations ago, we were fighting socialists. And yeah, but now, Bernie's not a socialist. Democratic socialist, yes. Red socialist, communist. the The line there it's it's a thin line. It's a it's a gray area. It is, and I don't, I don't trust it at all. I mean, I personally think we're screwed. Anything we choose. And it's, to me, it comes down to, I mean, obviously, we are on the opposite ends of political support, which is really not what this podcast is about, but I guess I might as well just mention it really quick, Um, is that um, I feel like, you know, this election season has sort of uh, made itself conducive to a lack of formality and respect in just politics. So, I don't know how I feel about it, but... uh, It's definitely got me to pay attention a whole lot more than I used to. I mean, I'm also an adult now, which we weren't in 2012, but it's interesting. 2012 was just... That was barely a choice either way. That was establishment clown, establishment clown. Yeah. Well, then I feel like this is like the opposite. It's like anti-establishment clown versus anti-establishment clown, in my opinion. Mm Mm-hmm. I, I wish we had somebody who was just like a normal person, Ron. I don't know. I, I guess that wouldn't get any votes. Not right now, and definitely not no. this late in the election. I mean... Oh, obviously not, yeah. Oh, we're already clear-cut for this one, yeah. The GOP didn't run a single candidate, the normal candidate, that... No. They could have could have even possibly won. Yeah, well, when I say a normal person, I don't mean normal candidate. I don't mean like a George Bush or a Hillary Clinton or anything like that. I mean just like, like an everyday man, if that's even possible, like you or me, but who is like smarter and like just a better person. I don't know. At I guess begin- that can't at happen. The of, at the beginning of the election, I really did like Ben Carson. I mean... Yeah, he wasn't perfect. I thought he was a little too soft spoken. I didn't think he was, you know, enough of a go getter. I thought he, I thought he brought in a little bit too much, uh, a little bit too much religion. But at the at the same time, as much as we are separation of church and state, our country does need to come back a little bit to its roots because we were founded with Christian principles, and I feel like we need a leader who actually you know, was raised up with the with the goodness in his heart that Ben Carson had. And, I mean, I've read several of Ben Carson's books. He's a very, very, very intelligent individual with some yeah. very good points. And he made, he made me think different about a lot of things. But at the end of the day, he was, he was too soft-spoken to, to win. And, I mean, before he became Speaker of the House, I would have supported Paul Ryan – all day, any day. Yeah, same here, actually. But as soon, I mean, the first picture I saw of Paul Ryan was him standing in his office with the American flag behind him with his bow drawn back. 
<laughs> That's the first picture I ever saw of him. I was like, yeah, I like that guy. Nice. nice. And <laughs> his actions upon becoming Speaker of the House, I don't support that guy at all. And, I mean, if you go to his Facebook page, anything he posts, he gets ripped to shreds by every single person in the comments. Like, Republicans, Democrats, Independents, it doesn't matter. Oh, every man. single one rips him to shreds in the comments. I know. I feel like he didn't even want that job, right? And then I don't, I don't think so. And now he's become, like, not a politician I really like anymore. But I, I thought he had promise, but my God. <laughs> I thought he had promise, but he caved. He, he honestly caved. Yeah, he did. Man. Well, I guess we're a little off topic now. And we have gone on for, <laughs> for quite a while, about 35 minutes. Um, so is there anything else that you want to say in summation um, to however many people we have watching? Yeah, like all five of them probably. Yeah, I'm hey, maybe pretty, six. I'm pretty ugly. I'm maybe pretty seven. Ugly. No, they probably don't want to see me, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah, as, as an American citizen, you have... Maybe not explicit responsibilities, but you have implied responsibilities as an American. Yeah, as very a true. citizen of, in my opinion, the best country on Earth. On Earth. Oh, I dropped this. <laughs> As a citizen of the best country on earth, you have some implied responsibilities. I mean, take care of your home, take care of your family, earn your money, pay your taxes. If you see litter on the ground, pick it the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> Volunteer once in a while. I mean, I'm currently working on becoming a junior leader for the Boy Scout troop on Fort Sill. Nice. And I'm an assistant scoutmaster too. We are yeah. on the same page there. <laughs> I mean, it's it's kind of hard to squeeze that in a lot of time. Like, I missed a meeting this week because my truck's broken, but... Yeah. Yeah, um, I mean, I think it well, all comes down to you got you just got to try and just got to do shit that you believe in. Yeah. You just got to do shit, really. I mean, go on a mission trip. Help an old lady cross the street. Help an old lady snowplow her driveway. Yeah. Do something good. I mean, there's so many people nowadays that don't care about anything except for themselves. And I mean... Yeah. Even even if you think that somebody is your worst enemy, it's not that they're against you. It's that they're for themselves. Quit being for yourself. Help other people. Do the right fucking thing. It's not hard. I mean, how hard is it to hold the door? How, hold it, how hard is it to be polite? How hard is it to comply with the police officers? Yeah. I mean, come on, people. You're causing problems where no problem needs to be caused. And that's where society starts to go downhill is where – if you would just cooperate, do the right thing, be a good person, it could go ten times better than it does. But no, you're like, oh, I got to I gotta yeah. stick up for myself. I got to blah, blah, blah. Just do the right damn thing. Yeah, it might take an extra couple minutes or an extra hour or so. But do the right thing. Take time out of your day. Be, I mean, even if you don't have religion, even if you don't believe in a single goddamn thing in this world, find something to care about. Find something Absolutely. to lead you to do the right thing. Be, work every single day at being a better person. Because it doesn't matter how bad everything is around you. If you wake up every single day with the mentality, I'm going to be better today than I was yesterday. At better, You did 10 push-ups yesterday. Do 15 push-ups today. Yeah. I mean, if you're doing 10 push-ups, you kind of suck. But, I mean... <laughs> just constantly work on improving yourself. That's how, if everybody does that, that's how the country improves as a whole. That's how people stop dying in the streets in Chicago. Like, oh, hey, I'm a gangbanger. Definitely. I went out and killed three people yesterday. Maybe I shouldn't do that today. You know? Yeah. I mean, if you work on getting better and affect a positive change around you, that's, that's like, contagious. That, that change, that positivity... And, I mean, the, the best way that I can describe or give an example of is mission trips I try to go on every year to uh, Kentucky, Redbird Mission Trip. Mm -hmm. I'd recommend that to anyone looking into going to Redbird. Goes down to Kentucky. I mean, the positivity of that environment. Everybody is so excited to talk to you about, about their project, you know, who they're helping, how they're helping them. Yeah. They want to hear what you're doing. I mean, it's, it's such a positive atmosphere. That's contagious. That stuff, I mean, it makes you feel good. It will make people around you feel good, and you're improving stuff. You're improving stuff in America. You're improving your country by doing that. Like, it's it's not hard to be a good citizen. I mean, 
Vote. I agree. It doesn't matter who you vote for, but vote for who speaks for what you believe. Mm-hmm. Amen. So don't just don't go to the don't just go to the fucking election booth and click the box because it says Republican or Democrat. Yeah. Pick the pick the congressman or the representative who actually suits you, who actually suits your rights. Pick the governor that suits what you want. Pick whoever's going to do right. Pick whoever's going to maintain the ideals that our country was set up upon. The Second Amendment, the First Amendment, Third Amendment. All that good stuff. I mean, yeah. I got fucking... I got Molan LaBay tattooed on my freaking arm. Nice. And you're not nice. taking my guns, even if you try. Keep your rights. Fight for your rights. Don't be ignorant about fighting for your rights. Fight for your rights in the right way. I mean, it's just... It's too freaking easy to do the right damn thing. I mean, I hope you don't have to bleep this out, because I'm going to sound like a freaking jukebox or something. Oh, know. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. That, that'd be too much work for me. <laughs> for no I mean, reason. I mean, I, I've been toning it down a lot because, like, I usually use fuck like a comma, but... <laughs> Dude, I, um, I wish I could. I mean, I, I feel like... And it, pretty much everything you said uh, is stuff that I would think most people can all get behind as well. So, um, that's, the, that's the beauty of it. It's all... Like, what you said was pretty much all bipartisan. Just don't think just for yourself. I believe it's Albert Pine that said once... Um, uh, something to the effect of that the only thing that is left in the world after you pass on is what you did for others. So, Exactly. Exactly. That's exactly what it is. Like, if you go through your whole life doing nothing but stuff for yourself, yeah, your, your kids will remember you, your, your family will remember you. That's about but it. After you're done, who's going to care? But if you spend your time, your free time, Rather than sitting there playing your Xbox, and yeah, I have an Xbox. I spend maybe like a couple hours a week on it, maybe. I mean, if you've got free time, go out and pick up trash off the road. Go freaking, go mow an old lady's lawn. Do something. Something good, because it doesn't matter what you do for yourself. But what you do for others, that's what matters. That's what touches people. People remember that kind of stuff. Absolutely. And then, yeah, it's kind, of, it's kind of vain to do things to be remembered for, but do something memorable because if they remember, hey, I remember when I was down on my luck and a guy gave me $5 on the corner of the street. You know, that's positivity being built up and brought along. I mean, take care of your home. Teach a kid how to hunt. Do something good. And, I mean... I don't know. I just I don't understand why it's so hard for people. Like, dude, I agree. You know what? You know what? Jesus. You know what Jesus Christ said. Jesus Christ Himself. He said, "Whatever you've done for the least of these, you've done for me." So I take that to mean, whatever you do for a person who you know can never ever pay you back in their entire life, can never repay you, can never make it up to you. Whatever you do for that person, out of the goodness of your heart. You didn't do for yourself. You didn't do for them. You really did for Jesus. You're doing good things for the world. That's, I mean, at the end of the day, what else, what else can you do? Why would, yeah. you, why would you spend your time going around being a negative person? Like, I mean, yeah, I have, I have a lot of bad things I've done in my life that I need to make up for. There's probably a lot of stuff that I can't make up for, but... At the same time, I'm doing my best, and that's all you can do is do your best. And that, that's a Boy Scout thing, isn't it? Do your yeah. best. That's actually Cub Scouts. They teach you that when you're, like, five. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. That's really what it comes down to, too. Absolutely. I mean, don't, don't rape people. Don't, don't fucking murder people. Don't. Like, how hard <laughs> is it just not be a shitty human being? Like, Jesus fucking Christ, people. Yes, I think those are perfect words to leave off of. Do not be uh, a shitty human being. <laughs> yeah, I could, that could be the title of, of, of the video. Don't be a shitty fucking person. Yeah, seriously. Fuck. It, just, it totally could. I'm, pu I'm putting that in there somewhere. Well, Hunter, thank you so much for, for coming on today. And it was good to talk to you because I haven't really seen you in person like in well, since we graduated high school, which seems like an eternity ago. But, yeah. I don't think I have seen you since high school, but no, I don't think so. I'll be home. Hopefully, I'll be home sometime soon. Yeah, that'd be cool. Especially if I get that damn truck out there fixed, almost killed me last weekend. 
All right, well, that'll be the plan. So I'm not going to end the call, but I'm going to end the video. So um, thank you guys for watching. And um, Hunter, do you have, like, anywhere where people, you would like people to follow you, like Twitter or anything? I, I doubt you really care, but I figured I'd ask. No, I don't, I don't, I don't care at all. Y'all can fuck off if you want to follow me. All right, well, there you go, folks. <laughs>